So, there is a thought hovering in all of your minds right now. When do we get to leave? The reason I say that is because not too long ago, I was in school myself. And I understand that if someone asked us to come to school on a Saturday, it was pretty cringeworthy. So I understand your pain of having to sit here for a big chunk of your day listening to a few people talk. You're probably wondering, how could this ever be important in your life? Just the way you have wondered multiple times, how could calculus ever be important in your life? Well, I cannot answer that for you because I still wonder that myself to this day, but I can try answering your question of why this speech today could be worth your while. So let me tell you a story. Imagine this. The year is 2010, the country, India. A 16-year-old boy has just told his parents that he would like to go to the US to study engineering for his bachelor's degree. Fortunately, the family is such that they can afford such an education and the boy has the credentials to get into a college like that. So what happens next? Well, everyone is pretty thrilled because it's a pretty good news, but a pretty boring story. Now here's a plot twist. The year is 2010, the country, India, and a 16-year-old girl has just told her parents that she would like to go to the US to study journalism for her bachelor's degree. The earlier fortunes that I mentioned in the original story are exactly the same. Alone? To study journalism? Who goes to the US to study journalism for a bachelor's degree? And that too, a girl? And that too, alone? So you see, the exact same story, but I replaced two words. The word boy for girl and the word engineering for journalism. And this story that I have so dramatically presented to you is my story. Clearly, I'm not a boy, so my story is the girl's version. And the shocking reactions that I described to you did not come from my parents to whom I had broken the news, but from members of the extended family, relatives, family friends, and people we dub members of the society. So let me give you a little background about myself. I have never been one to give into pressure from the society. But that has not prevented that pressure from coming at me. You see, I was a pretty good student academically. So people assumed I would take up science in school. I didn't. And then because I was bookishly smart, people thought I must study a lot. I didn't. In fact, I was barely to be found in the classroom. I couldn't sit in one place and absorb all the knowledge that was being provided to me, so I was mostly outside engaging in extra extracurricular activities. Anyway, so people's expectations, society's stereotypes, have been of little importance to me. And my family actually has played a very key role in letting me be like that. They have never imposed anything on me. They let me study whatever, wherever I wanted to. Because you see, my father also wanted to do something that was out of the stereotype. He wanted to be an electrical engineer. Now you are probably wondering, how is that out of the stereotype. After all, we live in a country obsessed with engineers, doctors, and following the recent trends, unfortunately, that. For anyone who doesn't know the meaning, it means a human god that people put on a pedestal in India 
But in more than one case, these people have turned out to be either crime lords or even rapists. Anyway, back to engineering. So if engineering were a religion in India, it would be the fifth most populous religion in India. And that is behind religions that are actually religions and not fields of study. So, my father, he wanted to be an electrical engineer, and that was not necessarily debunking the stereotype, the status quo. What was, though, he wanted to do it on his own terms. He wanted to be a businessman in a family full of teachers and people with secure jobs. And mind you, this is a story of ancient times. I'm sorry to make my father sitting here feel so old, but back in those times, it was a pretty big deal and a pretty risky one to be a businessman. The differing factor in his story from mine is that he never got any encouragement or support from his family. He did it anyway, but I think it taught him to not deny that kind of encouragement to his children. Anyway, back to me. So many young individuals actually, even in this day and age, do not have the kind of privilege that I got in terms of the support from my parents. In fact, the first people to often crush a young person's dreams are often their family members. The second is the concept of log kya kahenge, which translates to what will people say. So where does passion play into all of this? Well, I'm going to give you some sagely wisdom. It's going to sound very cliched, but it's true. In life, more people will try to pull you down than people who will try to show you up. Especially if your ideas are against the wave of the society. So how do you prevent yourself from getting weighed down by these people and their expectations? Through passion. So passion, in my words, is wanting something badly. You don't have to want it right now. In fact, there is no good time to be passionate about something. But make sure that when you do know what you really want, you want it so badly that nothing else matters. And this wanting can be of anything. You can really badly want to be an engineer. After all, more than one million people in India do. And people will try to pull you down by telling you, you are not smart enough, you are not capable enough. Don't listen to them. You can really badly want to be a historian, and people will say, is that even a career? How are you going to make money? Don't listen to them. I mean, still pay your bills, but don't listen to them. You can really badly want to be a journalist, and people will tell you, isn't that a risky profession, especially for a woman? Is that even a respectable career? I didn't listen to them. You see, <clears throat> human beings are very weird creatures. We are never satisfied, but if we keep suppressing our inner voice, our inner choice, all we are doing is pushing ourselves further away from satisfaction by merely following a path because others too are prodding down the same path. So is passion everything? Can you just really badly want something? And that's the answer to the most perplexing riddle that we have been asking for ages? Of course not. There are other ingredients in the recipe. 
but nothing that all you people here don't already know. Be hardworking, be focused, and all that jazz that you often hear at the dinner table. But there is something that no one will tell you. Be stubborn. Now parents and adults and teachers, please don't gasp. I'm not encouraging your children and your students to be stubborn to the extent where it's burning holes in your pockets. But what I mean is, we're often told that it's not a good thing to be stubborn. We should be accommodating. We should be adjusting. But I would like to ask why? Why should I be accommodating when it comes to my career? Why should I adjust when it comes to my personal growth? If Barack Obama would have been accommodating, he may have never been able to break the chain of all white American presidents. If Saina Nehwal would have been just a tad bit more accommodating, she may have never become the highest paid athlete outside the realm of cricket in a country that worships cricket. But on the other hand, because we are made to adjust and accommodate, women in the world still make only $100 to ev for every $140 that a man makes. None of the big names that we know today are big because those people adjusted and accommodated. Those names are big because those people didn't. And they fought. So here's another story. When I was at CBS News, which was up until two months ago in New York, I was at a very entry-level position. My job was to assist TV producers, with whatever they needed, whether it was research, collecting elements for their stories, going out on shoots, anything of that sort. So when I felt that I had a swing of my responsibilities, I thought, what if I decide to do my own stories? So I went to someone who was in a more powerful position than I was, and I presented my idea to them. They said, People in your job profile don't really pitch stories. So why don't you stick to something that is in your job profile and prove your worth that way? I thought, no. And so I thought of an idea. I went to a producer and told them my idea. They said, you could do it, but it might be a hassle to get a reporter and then to get a camera crew. So I thought, let's step into this hassle. After all, we're Indians. We're experts at kicking off hassles on a daily basis. So I got the camera crew. I got the reporter. We shot the story. And I got all my elements in place. Then came the final leg of the process, which was editing. I very excitedly went to an editor and I said, could you help me edit the story in your free time? No. I went to another one. No. I went to a producer and said, is there a day when my story could air? No, the calendar is full of segments that we need to air. No, 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 no. Until I got one yes and then one more until I had enough yeses to finally have my story air just days before my time at CBS News was up. Some would call it persistence. Some could call it, man, she's so annoying. But these are only ways to sugarcoat the word stubborn. And why take shame in admitting that you are stubborn? Because people will talk about you, behind you. You know what? They will anyway. And once you stop caring about what people have to think or say, that's when you will achieve your best, most badass moments in life. So my best moments in my career came from being stubborn. Here on the right is the story that I shot and was finally able to get on air. It also made it to the website. And then on the left, 
I also had the opportunity to read my own story for air for a mock reel that I was doing at CBS News. All the result of not accepting a bunch of no's. So back to my question of why this speech could even remotely be important in your life. Because when I was in school, no one told us that it was okay to want a different path, to walk that different path. While we read lines like robots from Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken, no one said it was actually okay to not take the road that other people were taking. And I don't want that to be your roadblock. So I want it to be the someone to tell you that when it comes to your dreams, be stubborn, be passionate, be proudly passionate. Thank you. <laughs>